holy earth Who compares to the glory Of a saviour, the king of love Who gave all dying for me Your ways I don't understand You're completely other To all else that I've seen and compared To you God I've wondered that I will sing my song Tell you God that
dying thirsty Lord And I'm crying out for more I know I can trust in your love and In the darkness in the night When I'm starving for the light I know I can trust in your love You keep You keep no record of my sin No, you don't you don't remember all my shame oh, oh, oh. Your love fills every disease Your love fulfills my every need Your love is everything to me Your love is everything Your love fills every disease Your love fulfills my every need Your love is everything to me And I'm crying out for more Well, I know I can trust in your love And in the darkness in the night When I'm starving for the light Well, I know I can trust in your love You keep, you keep no record of my sin Forget your promises. I will not forget. I won't forget your love. I will not forget. Nothing is impossible. I will not forget. I won't forget your love. I will not. I will not forget. I won't forget your promises. I will not forget. I won't forget your love. Yeah. I won't forget your love I will not forget Nothing is impossible I will not forget I won't forget your love I will not, I will not forget Won't forget your promises I will not forget I won't forget your love I will not forget Nothing is impossible I will not forget I won't forget your love, I won't forget your kindness and I won't forget your faithfulness I won't forget your provision for me That you're there when I'm in need Oh, and I won't forget your kindness and I won't forget your kindness I won't forget your kindness I won't forget you, Jesus, yeah. I won't forget your kindness. I won't forget you. Promise 
the fire scarborough family and everyone watching welcome to our sunday um, service church online we are so glad that you are able to join us this morning um so and you know what a special hello and welcome to the kids who are watching as well man like i have three kids they are being they are at home from monday to friday sitting in front of a screen and doing school Good job, kids. Come on. Good job. And even to the parents, so good. Bless you guys. Bless you. So uh, before we jump into worship, um, let's just pray. After worship, we will have communion. So have your communion elements ready. And then um, we will hear the word from our pastors. So let's pray together. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you that you are always with us. And thank you for your presence right now here in this place and with everyone who is watching right now. Thank you for your presence, Holy Spirit. Can you just say that with me? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for your presence with me. We honor your presence, Holy Spirit. Can you help us to be aware of you? Can you help us to worship our Father in spirit and in truth? We bless you, Holy Spirit. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Appa. Come on. Let's worship together. We honor your presence We honor your presence Holy Spirit We honor your presence You're welcome in this place You are welcome in this place We honor your presence welcome you with praise we welcome you with praise we welcome you with praise almighty god of love be welcomed in this place we welcome you with praise we welcome you with praise almighty god of love be welcome we welcome you with praise we welcome you with praise we welcome you with praise, Almighty God of 
love we welcome in this place we welcome you with praise we welcome you with praise almighty god of love be welcomed in this place. Let our praise be your welcome. Let our songs be a sign. We are here for
welcomed in this place. Oh, you are the almighty God of love. Be welcomed in this place. Reveal your love here this morning. Reveal your love here this morning. Almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place. Open our hearts before you. We open our hearts before you to receive your love, receive your love. Almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place. You won't kick 
Father's house Was lost, but now. 
When I was worshiping, I just saw this picture. And especially when we went to Amazing Grace, the Father is saying, I love you. You are my beloved son. You are my beloved daughter. But how often, how many of you, I feel like there are people who say, oh man, you don't know who I am, what I did. And you are not able to hear that, to experience that. And I really felt like the Father is inviting you to lay down your burden. He loves you unconditionally. You know what unconditionally means? I'm still learning English. And I googled that There's, and I asked some people. <laughs> unconditionally means without any expectation. Even if you would hold this in your hands, he's still saying over you, you are my beloved son. You are my beloved daughter. With you, I'm well pleased. What do you mean, Appa? What do you mean, God? You are my beloved son. You are my beloved daughter. With you, I'm well pleased. But he doesn't want to let you there where you are. He is inviting you to lay down your burdens so that your eyes may be, be open to see and to hear and to experience him. He is, it, he is saying it over and over and over again, over you. And if you are not able to hear and experience, I invite you this morning, just pretend like you're holding a bag like this. Okay, just stretch out your arm like this. You don't have to go like me in the kitchen and grab a garbage bag. Just stretch out your arm like this. And pretend like you're holding your burdens, your secret sins. And choose to give it to Him. Say this with me. Appa, I lay my burdens down. I lay my burdens down. To your feet, Jesus. Say this with me. I lay my burdens to your feet, Jesus. Come on. And now, just close your eyes and receive this. I bless your ears to hear. And I bless your eyes to see in the name of Jesus. Listen to this. This is what your Father is saying. Your Heavenly Father is saying over you. You 
are my beloved daughter. You are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. Receive this. Receive this. Holy Spirit, come and do what only you can do. Can you take these words? Can you take it deep into our hearts? Up, I pray for everyone watching. Can you touch them? Encounter them in the name of Jesus with your transforming presence. No guilt, no condemnation. Wiped off in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Appa. Thank you, Appa. Amazing grace. How amazing is your grace, Appa. Allow him to, he loved us first. Allow him to speak to you how much he loves you. Only then we are able to love him back. So just, let's just spend a couple more seconds. Just receive in the name of Jesus. Receive in the name of Jesus. son you are my beloved daughter with you I'm well pleased the Bible in 1st John 316 there it says and this is how we know what love is Jesus let me read that to you 1st John 316 is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. That is love. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for laying your life down for us. together the Bible says Jesus took bread broke it after saying thanks thank you Abba he broke it and gave it to the disciple and said this is my body given to you this is my love manifested for you and Thank you for this new covenant of love. And we say yes. We proclaim your death, Jesus. We proclaim your love, Abba. We proclaim your death, Jesus. Thank you for dying for us. Thank you. Let's eat. And he took the cup. And after giving thanks... He gave it to the disciple and said, this is my blood Sh shared for you, shed for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your blood, for your precious blood, which cleanses us, which protects us. Thank you for your blood, Jesus. We say yes. We say yes. We say yes to communion. We say yes to come, to come in union with you, Jesus. To come in union with you, Holy Spirit. Abba. 
dice yes thank you Jesus let's drink what love is a practical thing what we can do to remember and to proclaim and to know that you love us so much thank you for your love Papa Holy Spirit can you help us to receive just continually even through the week through the days the coming years can you take us deeper Holy Spirit in the love of our Father into, deeper into our to the heart of our Father. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I had a couple of dreams last night and I just want to would like to share that with you and I hope you will be blessed with this uh, in, I saw uh, Eddie and Eddie if you are watching um, I felt like you are um, I don't know if you applied for a job or like in that dream I just saw you like going to join a team but you are not sure if you are going to make it and if you are going to be part of that team but I just saw that perspective from the boss I just saw favor and we just bless you in the name of Jesus favor on you Eddie in the name of Jesus then I saw a man I don't know if that is your job or your name Fisher and um, I just saw that you made an investment and um, you feel like everything is lost it was a huge investment and you feel like everything is lost and I just in that dream I just felt like um, to lay it down before God lay it down bring it before him and I just felt like he will restore everything for you so bless you Fisher if that is your name or your job bless you Fisher receive restoration not only physically but even in the spiritual receive restoration in the name of Jesus I saw another in the other scene I saw a young girl and you are gonna move um, and and I felt like in that dream I saw you being just lost not knowing uh, how to get there and I, I felt like waking up from that dream I felt like this is a spiritual journey and um, I, I feel like um, you are being like feeling lost and I feel like you are being in a transition to the next level um, in that dream I saw a spiritual person coming into your life and leading you to an elevator which brings you to the second floor and I saw the basement the, what is stored in storage in, uh, it's stored for you and anyway I just bless you in the name of Jesus if you are feeling like you are moving like you are feeling that you had a dream or something like that I just bless you in the name of Jesus to level up in Jesus name thank you Appa thank you we love you Appa we love you Jesus we love you Holy Spirit thank you so much worship team um for you to bring your tithes and offerings uh, go to ctf scarborough slash giving catch the fire scarborough slash giving and you will find all the information there and um, next we are gonna um, you're gonna see some announcement and right after the announcement um, we will hear 
the word from our pastors, Pastor Ramesh and Pastor Elsie. So let's just pray. Let's just close one more time our eyes and let's ask the Holy Spirit to position us. Holy Spirit, can you prepare our hearts? Can you soften our hearts to receive what you have for us this morning or this afternoon or whenever you are watching it right now? Come Holy Spirit and we bless our pastors in the name of Jesus. Receive and be transformed in the name of Jesus. Amen. This Wednesday, February 10th, Pastor Ramesh will be teaching on and ministering into a performance orientation. This is a tendency to be focused on pleasing God and pleasing others with our works as opposed to operating from a place of knowing our identity in Christ. Do you want to experience more freedom in this area? Join us to learn, pray, and be ministered to Wednesday night at 7.30 on Zoom. Are you longing for some personal interaction, accountability, and encouragement? Joining a pod or a connect group might be just what you're looking for. Send us a note at scarborough at catchthefire.com to inquire. As always, you can find details for all of our events in your weekly email news. Good morning, Catch the Fire Scarborough family. <clears throat> Good morning, everybody. Trying to get this frog out of my throat. I see it hopping away. <laughs> yes. Very nice to be with you all again this morning. We are looking forward to sharing the third part of our, of our three-part series on love. Yes. What's love got to do with it? <laughs> got to do with it. Oh, well, it's got a whole lot to do with everything. Yeah, some of... Let me just mention just last month january was the 27th anniversary of the outpouring of the father's blessing the father's love wow. and i remember when i first came to the airport almost 27 years ago for a visit i was blown away by all the supernatural stuff that was happening mm -hmm. and the prophetic i mean this guy gave me a word about being on a boat and he had no idea that I had just come, literally just come from a ship where I was sailing around the world as part of a Christian community and, uh, and uh, involved in missions and telling people about Jesus. And he just read my mail. Mm -hmm. And that really, really uh, impacted me because that was brand new for me. Mm -hmm. I used to be back in those days, we, oh, before that time I was a sort of a straight-laced, good evangelical guy preaching the gospel, seeing people get saved. And by the grace of God, that was happening. But then I came to the airport, and there was this whole other dimension to the spiritual life with Christ. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh my gosh, as soon as I'm done, I have to come back and learn so I can be a way more effective minister. i got to be better at prophesying and all those things. Uh, but of course, Jehovah Sneaky had another plan, because yes, he, he brought me back to the airport church eventually, uh, but it was primarily to teach me about his love. Mm. Firstly, his fatherly love for me. Yes. And therefore that I was a son to him. And that brought a significant measure of healing. A whole bunch of uh, striving and drivenness mm -hmm. left. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, but here we are 27 years after. And he's bringing us back to uh, re-examining our life of love with him uh, in our own hearts and as we touch other people's mm -hmm. lives. Mm -hmm. So we, we're just um, going to be sharing today on the third part, which is focused on loving our neighbor, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things at the airport church, I know we've done a rebranding and everything else uh, recently, but in the olden days, there was a sign on the back of the church which said to walk in God's love and then to give it away. Mm -hmm. To walk in God's love and then to give it away. Uh, uh, one of our friends, uh, Ed Peoric, who's a father heart uh, sort of specialist, one of his 
messages uh, is entitled the love that finds us is the love that sends us mm -hmm. and the point there is that when we receive the father's love when we get healing from it when we're restored when we we're settled on the inside when we're centered by the father's love then that propels us to uh, reach out and to give this away mm -hmm. to other people. Isn't that true, my darling? Yeah, that's true transformation. Exactly. I would say that uh, we haven't fully received the love of God in all of its dimensions until uh, a big part of what we do is being other-focused. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So... Uh, first uh, week we talked about uh, that, receiving the Father's love and, and working on intimacy, working on relationship with God, lavishing our affection on Him. And then the second week we talked about uh, the inward journey, getting our hearts healed. And the, one of the main points I was making there is that is that our healing of our hearts can only be measured in relationship with other people. Because mm -hmm. we are not, th these things are hinged together. We can listen to a million um, messages on love, and we can pray to receive the love of God and all these wonderful things, but we only know or we only get to practice love in, in the context of relationships with other people. Very true. All right? So that was primarily our talk last week. And one of the statements I came up with is, I grow in loving God with my whole heart as I grow in getting my heart whole. Let me say that again. I grow in loving God with my whole heart as I grow in getting my heart whole. That's really good. Write that right? down. Write that down dot com. I put it up on Facebook as well. I should tweet it too. Mm -hmm. So today we're talking about the outward journey. And, I'm, and we've been basing our talks primarily on the Great Commission from Matthew 22. You know, one of the things that John and others have said is that the Great Commission, sorry, the Great Commandment comes before the Great Commission. Mm -hmm. And that's a bit uh, tongue-in-cheek because in the book of Matthew, the Great Commandment is given in Matthew 22, and then the Great Commission is given in, given in Matthew 28. So it comes before in, uh -huh. in the book, right? But of course, the real meaning is that we can't be focused on uh, the Great Commission if we don't first have our hearts healed and experiencing the love of God. Because what we get, what we want to give away, is wholeness and health, and based on the foundation of love, mm -hmm. like we shared from First Corinthians, first three chapters already. Right? We can't do all these things if the found, and it would it would be meaningless and nothing really if it's not f founded on God's love. Yeah, that's 1 Corinthians 13, isn't it? 1 Corinthians 13, first three, first three verses. Yeah. So today, though, I'm speaking about the great commandment, but from Luke chapter 10, because Luke gives a little bit of a different story, a little bit of a different, different context to this. Let me start reading Luke chapter 10, verse 25 to 37, and then you will share some testimonies as well, some of your own personal story about this. Mm -hmm. So, starting at verse 25, Luke chapter 10, on one occasion, an expert in the law, a PhD in the law, stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Chapter 26, I mean verse 26, what is written in the law, he replied, how do you read it? Well, Jesus says, well, you're an expert in the law. What does the law say about how do you uh, receive eternal life? And his answer was, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. That's what the PhD in law was saying to Jesus in response to his question. What does the law say about eternal life? While well, loving God with everything within you and loving other people as you love yourself. Mm -hmm. Amen. Jesus says, verse 28, you have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But here's the next line, verse 20, 29. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, who is my neighbor? Mm -hmm. 
So what Jesus does, does now is he, he tells the parable of the Good Samaritan. I'm going to not read it. I'm just going to quickly encapsulate what the, what the parable is. There's this man who was beaten up by a bunch of robbers and thieves and crooks and thrown to the side of the road. Along comes a priest, a, a religious man. He sees the guy by the side of the road and he walks around on the other side of the road to go about his business. Uh, a, a Levite, another priestly, another religious person comes along, sees the man in, and avoids him and passes by and goes about his business. A Samaritan who was a despised person in the Jewish community, somebody who was lesser, mm -hmm. almost like an outcast. Yeah. He's walking along, he sees this man, he bandages, it, bandages his wounds, give, gives him oil and olive oil, makes him better, takes him to an inn, tells the innkeeper, gives him some money, and says, on the way back, I'm going to check in, and if I still owe you money, I'll give you more money. Hmm. Amazing story of the Samaritan taking care of this stranger, really. Um, and so, so that's the parable. And then here's what Jesus says in verse 36. Which of these three, the priest, the Levite, the good Samaritan, which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers. The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus says, go and do likewise. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. Here's what I want to point out. Two questions were asked. The, the, pre, the, the, the religious guy, sorry, the, um, the lawyer says, who is my neighbor? He's trying to justify himself. So I'm meditating on this. Why was he wanting to, to justify himself by asking this question? Well, here's what I came up with. Because it's very, very possible for us to say we love God and we can do all the supposedly right things, especially in the context of church community. We can show up on Sunday mornings. We can sing the worship songs. We can raise our hands. We can flag. We can hop, skip, jump, dance. We can do all the things that would communicate to people from the outside that this guy really, really loves God. Look how he's worshiping God. Right? But the fact of the matter is, the Bible teaches us quite clearly in 1 John 4.10 and also in the book of James. In fact, in John, 1 John 4.10, it says, How can you say you love God and hate your brother? Right? And similarly, James makes a, a similar point. You can't say you love people and not care. You can't say you love God and not, lo and not care for the people who are in your midst. Mm -hmm. right? So those two things are hinged together. Yeah. You demonstrate your love for, for God. You demonstrate that you're receiving the love of God and living in the love of God when you have an authentic, loving care for your neighbor. Okay, so, so that's, that's the background for this guy's question. Who is my neighbor? And then Jesus says this. He asks this question after he tells the parable. Let me read it again. Um, who or which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? In other words, Jesus isn't saying, who is your neighbor? He's saying, who, to whom will you be a neighbor? Right? It's not a it's not a passive position. Here I'm standing here. Uh, who is my neighbor? Show me my neighbor. Right? You you become the neighbor. You proactively become the neighbor to the people around you. Mm -hmm. And specifically in this case, it's the people who need mercy. Mm -hmm. People who need mercy. Yeah. There's a song, by the way, that was sung a couple of years ago by the Hillsong people. And I want to just give you uh, a couple of lines, of the opening lines. It says, well, everybody needs compassion. A love, that, that's, a love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a Savior, the hope of wow. nations. Yeah. Let mercy fall on me. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying, absolutely, I've known Jesus for a long time. There's, a, there's a, a measure of healing in my heart. I'm walking in a measure of, of wholeness, but I'm fully, fully aware of the fact I need God's mercy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen? Amen. You know, grace is getting 
what we don't deserve. Mm -hmm. Mercy is not getting what mm -hmm. we do deserve. Mm -hmm. Should I say that again? Yes, please. It's a, it's a very common or mm -hmm. old, you know, if you've been around the church for a while, I'm sure you've heard this. But it says, grace is getting what you don't deserve. In other words, God's goodness, God's favor, God's, God's blessing. Mm -hmm. Mercy is not getting what you do deserve, mm -hmm. which is, you know, uh, punishment, which is ostracization. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a great distinction between those two. Yes. Yes. So, uh, here's the point of this parable. Everybody needs mercy. Not just the people who, you know, would seem more obvious. Those people who've been beaten up by life. Right? Uh, and in this current circumstance of this pandemic, there are many, many people who are struggling, who, have been, who are being beaten up basically mm -hmm. by this pandemic and, and thrown by the side of the road. And what they need is mercy. Yeah. And some of those people are actually our literal neighbors. Yes. Yes. Here's the big point, friends. When we know the love of God, when we're living in the love of God, we are going to be proactive in reaching out to people. Mm -hmm. Those people who are who need mercy. And in some cases, it's obvious those people who need mercy. But it, sometimes it's not always that obvious. I sometimes say that the people on Bay Street, the financial district here, right here in Toronto, they also need mercy. Mm -hmm. We have a friend whose ministry is to reach out to those people, mm -hmm. you know, those super wealthy folks who, who seem on the outward appearance to have everything together. They, they can spend money and buy whatever they need. They can go here, there, and everywhere. Mm -hmm. But so many of them, their marriages are struggling. Their kids are ostracized from them. There's a lot of internal discord among them those guys those folks those men and women they also need mercy mm -hmm. right so the whole point of this is uh being proactive yeah. and i love the fact that we have a team in our church uh, the outreach team who are growing and getting uh, tighter and beginning to crystallize some of the key ways that that they feel that we as a church will be involved in reaching out to people. And that's a very proactive step to take. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love the Alpha program that we're doing as yeah. well. That's a proactive step in reaching out to people, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But you also have some examples in your own life because we're not just talking about church programs. We're talking about every one of us, many mm -hmm. of us, most of us who have the capacity, and we all should, um, to reach out in some form led by the spirit mm -hmm. so you share some of your thoughts and ideas that you wanted to let us know about now. um well i i think i'll just um share just how important uh prayer is in mm -hmm. this journey yeah. i'm i'm really uh, loving the fact that our outreach team focus on prayer for one another yeah. and for the people that come across their their uh, hearts and minds and and that they're cultivating um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, prayer with each other as well as private now mm. i want to just say that um, for some of you who know me you'll understand this um, but i'm an introvert that's hard to imagine the only other person who's more of an introvert is my husband here um, we I'm such an introvert <laughs> that even though you're an introvert you feel like you're an extrovert that's true that's true uh, what does that mean that means that I like my own space I enjoy my own company um, you recharge your energy by being by being by alone a, and, by, and, by, yeah. and um, um, but it's in that place that I have discovered um, that my my relationship with God has taken me way beyond myself. And so, you know, I used to think, well, it's 
it's not in my nature to reach out. But I soon discovered that if I am having a genuine prayer life with God, He is constantly thinking about everybody under the sun. And I mean everybody. And Him and I talk about um, uh, our family, our friends, but He even talks about total strangers. He talks about my neighbors. Mm -hmm. And it's not long before I began to recognize that uh, if a neighbor comes to mind mm -hmm. uh, very often during the course of the day, he wants me to pray for them, but not just pray. There are very tangible things that I've discovered that he wants me to do. Like he will say, can you write an encouragement card? Yeah and send it in the mail. Don't slip it under their door. Send it in the mail. Mm -hmm. well, handwritten. Yes, handwritten. What, why would that speak to somebody? Maybe there is a, uh, this sense of, wow, that, that really means something. It costs somebody to do that. Yeah. And I've, I've noticed that um, there are uh, felt needs of my neighbors that I wouldn't be aware of if I wasn't talking to God about that. And so um, that's what actually gives me the boldness and the courage to reach out in sometimes total strangers. Um, it gives me the courage because I begin to, to um, hear God talking about them. And, and this includes maybe neighbors who aren't so uh, friendly or even likable. Uh, when you begin to hear God uh, move on your heart about people, uh, you relate to them differently. And that, you want to tell them a story of that lady? Yeah, yeah. I, um, there was a lady um, who knocked on my door, um, and I opened the door. She was on crutches, mm. and I'd never met her before. And she said, can you help me? She didn't even say her name or anything. She said, can you help me? And I thought, well, she must be in a lot of pain. So we went down the hall together, and... Uh, I, went, I wondered how in the world she knocked on my door because there were other doors in between. Mm -hmm. But um, I got to her place and she started telling me things to do for her. And so I did them and I turned, I said, is there anything else you'd like me to do? And she goes, no, that's good. She didn't say thank you or anything. She just, uh, I just left. She was a bit gruff, you said. She was a bit gruff. And I got back home and I just said, wow, that was different. Uh, she didn't even say thank you. Mm. And the Lord uh, got in my face about it. And, uh, and he said, um, what if it was me that knocked on your door? Uh, do you see your neighbor as though it's me wow. knocking wow, on wow, your wow, door? Wow, wow, wow. Uh, you didn't even know that she was in trouble, but I knew it. Mm -hmm. And and this was the thing that began to move on my heart. And, um, you know, so often we're looking for someone to reciprocate with kindness or, or uh, something. Uh, but if it's not there, um, that's okay. Because that's what love is. Love is inconvenient. Sometimes love is demanding. Love gets you awkward sometimes. Uh, the package that needs to be love can be a lot different than what you think. Um, and that is what, you know, God is working on my heart how to love without strings attached. What is unconditional love? Um, and I, I believe that that comes from my prayer life with Him where. He has softened me, where He's confronted me with my selfishness, my love for comfort, and He's put me in awkward situations uh, so that He can speak to them, so He can love them. And, um, uh, you know, there's a, there's a generosity uh, that is on the inside of God. There's a mercy on the inside of God. There's a kindness, mm. and He's aching to get out of us especially if we've had wholeness or healing in our own heart. I mean, we have the healing presence of God flowing through us. We've experienced Him. 
and now we get to release it. Um, there have been times when I've knocked on someone's door and said, you've been on my mind a lot. Can I pray for you? Is anything, um, is anything wrong? And even if they say no, but that's nice, uh, at least they know who to go to if they did need prayer. And there's a sense of availability that um, it's not only to God, Lord, I, I want to be available, but we actually make ourselves available to people. And, and I think that that yeah. is part of the journey, the outward journey mm. of being ready at the drop of a hat. And, um, yeah. yeah. Hey guys, there is a harvest that is coming, a global harvest that's coming. Um, and we want to be part of that harvest. Yeah. And so let's get ready by desiring, by pursuing deeper measures of the love of God in our lives. Let's, let's, let's work on our love relationship with God. Let's work on our love relationship, getting our hearts healed so that we will be ready and empowered to love our neighbor, not in some distant future right now. Right now. Let's work on loving the people around us. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Again, we, we have a couple of church programs that are outreach oriented, and that's fantastic. And the people who are involved in that are not doing this because they want to build their own ministries or their little empires, or they want to give or have testimonies, notches on their belt. Here's what God did through me. Uh, no, no, no. They're doing this because they're motivated by the love of God and want to make a difference in this world. Mm -hmm. Amen. So let's all be ready to go in that direction. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Love of God. Yeah. Shakabamba. Yeah. Let's just pray for our wonderful folks, my brothers and sisters. Um, thank you, Jesus. Father, we just we just honor you, Jesus. We honor you, God. We just we just marvel at your beauty. We marvel at your brilliance. We marvel at just how you, who you are, your kindness, your tenderness, the fact that you have given everything to us. You've given the very best. You've given yourself. And we're so, and we're forever grateful to you, Jesus. We're forever grateful to you. Mm -hmm. And our hearts are so enamored with you, God. We're so in love with you, Jesus. And we're, Lord, we ask that you would just increase our affection for you. Mm -hmm. We pour out our devotion. We pour out our affection over you. And we want that to multiply, Lord. Mm-hmm. Lord, I also ask that, that you would baptize us, Shaba, baptize us with a fresh baptism of love, a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit to come upon each and every hungry heart. Lord, fill us with your love. Fill us with your love. Fill us with your spirit, O oh God. Mm. Wow. That we will be living and serving and thinking and breathing and moving in the overflow of your spirit in our lives. Mm -hmm. Come, Lord Jesus, wow. increase your anointing in our midst. Thank you, Father. Come, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the joy set before you. You endured the cross you endured discomfort and mm. pain you just you you looked beyond wow. that and i feel that the holy spirit is um speaking Whoa. to us today that um there's nothing more joy giving than loving somebody wow. uh no strings attached mm. and i believe that there's there's um he's releasing a desire in our hearts to love like that, that our joy yes. would come from bringing life to others. And that I believe there's an adventure out there that is just so crazy, amazing, wonderful. Um, but he's inviting us uh, to go through that portal of hearing his heart for others and putting legs uh, to that mm. and putting hands to it. And, um, 
And I, I believe he's also saying that he wants to be the one to empower us mm -hmm. uh, to do those things that he's invited us to join him with. And, and even now, if you say, Lord, empower me to love others, I believe that pleases his heart because he wants to blow his breath in us. He wants to put his words of life on our tongue, that when we share, it would be full of life. It wouldn't be sour and, and critical, but there would come such a sweetness on us that pours through us that we would literally be the aroma to those who are perishing. Father, give us the joy of stepping uh, where you step and being led by you to those who ha have no hope, those who uh, are struggling, those who are in wow. trouble, those who uh, have poor opinions of themselves, lo those who are uh, negative, who mm. needed to be nurtured and loved and brought back to life. Lord, lead us to those yeah. all around us yeah. every day, yeah. whether it's in prayer or yeah. in person, yeah. that we would be hearing mm. your heartbeat because to be with you is to be thinking of others because that's who you are. You are full yeah. of mercy, uh, full of mercy in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Friends, we have family members, we have friends, we have neighbors, literal neighbors, we have colleagues mm -hmm. who really need to know that the God who exists, the God who's alive and who's real is a God who loves. Yep. And we get to be purveyors of that truth mm -hmm. to people. Amen? Amen. So go and love somebody <laughs> today. Very good. Bless you guys. See you on the personal prayer Zoom if you want prayer. Elsie and I will be there. Hop on over. Otherwise, you can go to the um, the Hangout Zoom as well to yeah. chit-chat, catch up yeah. with some other folks. Bless you. Have a great rest of the week. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Amen. Would you like a prayer from one of our prayer team? Find the link in your e-news, the chat rooms, or our website and hop on Zoom for some personal prayer ministry time right now. That is from about 11.45 to 12.30 on Sundays. Also happening right now is our Sunday Zoom Hangout time. If you'd just like to hang out and chat with others from our community, hop onto this Zoom meeting. Again, it runs from about 11.45 to 12.30 on Sundays. You can find the Zoom link for this one in the chat rooms too, as well as in your e-news or on our website on the Connect During COVID page. We also gather to pray three times a week for half an hour. Join us for the Engine Room prayer meeting Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday evenings at 7.30 p.m. Check your e-news or contact the office for the Zoom link. I've mentioned it many times already. Our e-news email has everything that's happening this week, as well as all the regular info you might be wondering about or looking for, including the links to all of our meetings. Make sure to subscribe at the bottom of any page of our website, and then take a glance through every week on Thursday afternoon so you stay informed about what's going on. We can't be the church all alone. Pods and connect groups are the best way to get connected or stay connected with Catch the Fire Scarborough. Are you interested in joining one? Send us a note at scarborough at catchthefire.com. You can return your tithes and give offerings to Catch the Fire Scarborough through a number of different avenues. Giving a gift online, church center mobile app, or texting a gift to 84321. You can also write a check or make an Interact e-transfer. You can find details for all of those avenues in your e-news or at ctfscarborough.com slash giving. We'd love to pray for you. You can call or text our office phone number at any time. The Lord bless you and keep you. 
The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. <laughs>